Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I want to teach you how you can read and write from text files using C++ programming language and it is very easy as you will see so once I show you the code and explain everything you will never forget it. Uh, but before I start I would like to take a brief moment to introduce C++ Builder. It is full-featured C++ IDE that helps you create apps fast for all major platforms while writing less code. It connects natively to almost 20 databases like MariaDB, Oracle, SQL Server, Postgres, and many more. The key value is C++ Builder's framework, which are powerful libraries that do more than other C++ tools. This includes the award-winning VCL framework for high-performance native Windows apps and FireMonkey framework for cross-platform UIs. Smart developers write better code faster and you can start for free using the link in the description. So how do you write and read from text files using C++ programming language? Well, the first step is that we need to include a library that is going to help us to work with files. And that library is called F stream. So the same way that we use IO stream so that we are able to input and output to our console, so to read and write from our console, we are going to use F stream library so that we are able to read and write from files. So that is going to be the first step. I am going to say include F stream like this and <clears throat> <laughs> okay, and inside this fstream library, there are a few data types. So the data type that we are going to use is also called fstream. So what I want to do is I want to declare a variable of type fstream. So I will say fstream, and I am going to call that variable my file. Okay. So now I'm going to use this my file variable so that I can open files, close files, read and write from those files. So the first thing that I want to show you is how you can write into a text file. So in order to be able to write into a text file, the first thing that you need to do is you need to open that file. So how do you do that? Well, you say my file dot open like this. And this open function receives two parameters, two arguments. The first one is going to be the name of your file. And then the second one is going to be the mode in which that file is going to be opened. So is that going to be a write mode or read mode or append mode or something else? So as I said, the first parameter is going to be the name of your file. So I'm going to use these quotation marks. And here I'm going to say that the name will be saldina.txt like this and make sure to use this .txt extension because we want to write into text files. So this is going to be the first parameter. This is the name of the file that will be opened and if this file does not exist, it is going to be created. Okay. And then the second parameter, as I already said, is going to be the mode. So what I want to do is I want to teach you how you can write into a text file. So the mode is going to be write. So you use IOS and then you put two colon signs. And here you are going to say that you want to output from this program here into this file here. So the mode is going to be out like this. So that is the mode that we use in order to write into a text file. So this here is a write mode. Okay, so how do you write into this file here? Well, the first step is you need to make sure that this stream has been opened successfully. So you need to make sure that you have successfully opened this file here. And for that, you are going to say if my file is open like this. Okay, so if this file here has been opened, what you can do is you can write into that file. So how do you write into a file? Well, the approach is very similar to the approach of writing into a console. In order to write into a console, you use cout command, and then you use these two redirection signs, and then you write the text that you want to output to your console. So let's say, for example, hello, and let's add a new 
line like this. So this is the approach that you use to output text to a console. Now the approach to output text to a file is very similar. So instead of see out object, you use this object here. So you just say my file and then these two redirection signs and then you put the text that you want to output to your file. Okay, so let's add another line. Let's say for example, my file, these two redirection signs and then let's say this is second Oh, this is second line. Okay, so with this we have successfully outputted two lines of text to our file and what we should do now is we should close that file. So after you have finished writing or reading from your file, you should close that file. And again, it is very easy to do that. You just say my file dot close like this. Okay. So those are all the steps that you need in order to write into a file. So first you open that file, you specify the name and the mode in which that file is going to be opened. And then you check if that file has been opened successfully. And then you can write into that file. And after you have finished writing, you are going to close that file. Okay, so one thing that I want to show you now is right click on this CPP read write file. So right click on your project and then select this option here, open folder in file explorer. So after I have done that, this project is going to be opened in my file explorer. And here we have all of the files of this project here. Now, what should happen after I run this program is that a file called saldina.txt should be created and it should contain this text here. So let's check that. I am going to run this program. Okay, and as you can see, there is nothing inside our console because we have not interacted with our console at all. We have just interacted with a file. So I am going to press enter in order to close this console. And if I right click on this project and then open folder in file explorer, you are going to see this file called Saldina and it is a text document. So if I open that file, as you can see, Inside that file, there are two lines of text, hello, and then this is second line, which means that we have successfully outputted this text here into a file called saldina.txt. So that is how you write into a text file using C++. But what is going to happen if you want, during the execution of your program, to append something more, so to append some other text to this file here? So I'm going to copy all of this code and then paste it here. And what I want to do is I want to say, hey, please open this file again so that I can write into that file and check if that file has been opened. And then what I want to write, what I want to append into that file is hello to, and then nothing else. I just want to say hello to, and after I have appended that, I just want to close that file. So what do you expect to happen after I run this program here? So if I run it, again, there will be nothing in our console. I'm just going to close it. Okay. And if I open this in file explorer, and if I open this file, what is going to be inside this file? Write me in the comment section. <laughs> so as you can see here, we only have hello to, which means that Okay, which means that all of this text here has been overridden. So only this text here is present inside our saldina.txt file. That is because every time that you use this output mode, you are going to override that file. So if you want to append new information to the information that is already present inside your file, you are going to use a mode called append. So you are going to say, iOS and then APP and that is append mode like this. So this code here says please open a file called saldina.txt and I want to append some new information to that file. So make sure that it has successfully been opened and then append this text here. So hello to and then close that file. So if I run this program, okay, 
and then I open it in File Explorer and then I double click on this saldina.txt as you can see here we have hello this is second line and then hello to which means that we have successfully appended this text to already existing information inside this file here. So that is how you write into your file and then append into your file. And then the third thing that I want to show you is how you can read from a file. So let's delete all of this code here because I don't need it. And now I'm going to show you how you can read from a file. So the first step again is to open a file in a read mode. So I'm going to say my file dot open and I'm going to open a file called saldina.txt and the mode is going to be I want to input from this file here into my program so that is going to be read mode so you use ios and then two column signs and then in like this and that is going to be a read mode so please input from this file here into this program here Okay, so after you have opened this file, make sure that it has been opened successfully. So if my file is open, what you can do is then you can read from this file inside these curly brackets here. So how are we going to write out the text from this file here? Well, I am going to use a while loop to access every single line of text of this file here. So the approach is going to be the following. I'm going to access the first line of text and I'm going to store that line into a string variable and then I will write out that variable. And then I'm going to access the second line of text, again, store it into a string variable and write out that variable. And I'm going to do that until I come to the last line of text of this file here. So for that, we are going to use while loop. If you're not familiar with while loop, I am going to link that video here and in the description as well, so make sure to watch that video. So as I said, the first thing that we will need is going to be a variable in which we will store that line of text. So that is going to be a string variable. Let's say string line like this and make sure to include string library if it is not recognized. So make sure to say include string like this. Okay, so here we are going to store a line of text from this file here. And then in order to be able to access to every single line of text, we are going to use while loop. So I will say while, okay. And here inside this condition, what I want to do is I want to use a function from string library, which is called get line. So I will say get line, okay. And this function here receives two parameters. The first parameter is going to be this object here, so my file. And then the second parameter will be this variable here, so line variable. Now, what this function here does is that it reads from this file here, so it reads a line of text and then it stores that line into this variable here. And it is going to do that for every single line of text inside this file here. And then when it comes to the last line of this file here, there will be no more lines, there will be no more text to read. So at that moment, this while loop is going to end. Okay, and then one very important thing is that if you want to use this get line function, you need to include a string library. Okay, so after we have successfully read a line of text from this file here, we are going to write out that line to our console. So I'm going to say C out line and let's add end line like this. Okay, so now I'm going to read every single line of text from this file here using this while loop. And then after I have successfully read every single line, what I need to do again is close this file here. So I am going to say at the end, after my while loop finishes, my file dot close, like this. 
Okay, and by doing this, we should be able to see everything that is inside this file here. We should be able to see that in our console. So if I run this program, let's see, as you can see, it says, hello, this is second line, and then hello too. Okay, so if I add manually um, a text to this saldina.txt file, again, if I open it, and if I add some text manually, so if I say, for example, this is fourth line, and then if I say bye-bye, like this, and if I save that, make sure to save these changes, and close this file, and I'm going to close this as well, and if I run my program, we should be able to see the text that we just added as well. So, let's see. And as you can see, indeed, it says this is fourth line and then bye-bye. Okay, so that is how you read a text from a file in C++. Since you always ask me to give you a task that you can use to practice on your own, in this video, I decided to give you two different tasks. So. The first task is going to be related to my video about ASCII table. I am going to link that video here and also in the description. And in that video, I explained how you can use ASCII table in order to cipher every single letter of English alphabet into a number. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to combine the knowledge from that video and this video so that you write your own story or a diary or a secret and then you cipher that text and you write it in a file. So whoever decides to open that file manually, he's just going to see a bunch of numbers and he's not going to understand anything. But you are going to create a program which is going to read from that file, decipher those numbers back into letters, and then write that text to your console so that you are able to read that story or secret or your diary or whatever you want to store into that file. So that is going to be your first task, and if you manage to solve this problem, put your code in the comment section so that I can see it and that other people can see it as well. The second task is a little bit more complex, and in order to solve it, you will need to learn and know about structures. So it is related to my video about structures, which I will link here and also in the description. So after you watch that video, at the end, there is a task to build a quiz application. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to use those instructions that I have given in that video in order to build a quiz application, but instead of hard coding all of the questions and answers in your C++ application, I want you to read those questions and answers from a file. So that is going to be your second task, and if you manage to solve this task, again, put your code in the comment section so that I can read it and that other people can see it as well. So I wish you good luck with solving these two tasks, and it is probably not going to be easy, but you should learn and you should practice your logic and your problem solving skills. So there you go, two tasks to do that. And again, you are probably going to make many mistakes and the process of learning is not going to be very easy, but that is completely normal. So if you manage to solve one or both tasks, please put your code in the comment section so that I can check it out and that other people can see it as well. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps me a lot to reach more people and help them to learn programming. And then if you have any questions or if you have any videos that you would like to see in the future, um, let me know in the comment section and I'm going to make those videos in the future. And if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon because then you are going to get a notification from me every time that I publish a new video. So thank you very much for watching and I am going to see you in some other video. Bye!